Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to set up a new Gmail account. So open up whatever browser you prefer. I'm using Google Chrome and navigate to google.com. It's going to kick you over to wherever you're located. So for me, .co.uk. And you should see this Gmail option in the corner. If not, you can use the search box to just search for Gmail and go from there. But there's two screens you might see when you're trying to set up a new email. So let's click on this one so I can show you. This is the fancy, you know, hey, come and create an account with Gmail page. And the other one, if we click sign in, is their regular old sign into my account. So if you're on this page, then create an account is down here. And on this page, it is this big red button. Both of these will take us to the exact same place. So then we need to fill in the account creation form. So name first and last, fairly simple. For the username, you can only use letters, numbers, dots. I think you can use dashes. No, nope, you can't use dashes. So that is all you can use in here. If you try and choose a name that has been taken, it's gonna warn you and say, no, someone already has that and it's not me that owns that, so thanks, other Tegan Rain. And it's gonna give you some terrible suggestions for some alternate email or usernames that you can have. But if I could have this name, then my email address would be tegan.rain at gmail.com. But I can't, so let's go with something else. So with the capitalization, it is something to keep in mind because for your actual email address, this will all be lower cased. Like Gmail just it ignores any kind of capitalization in your email address. But because you have all of these other things that you can use your username on, for example, YouTube, then maybe you do want the capitalization. This is how it will appear on YouTube if I'm like commenting or something. So if you want capitalization or anything, put it in there when you're creating your initial account. For the password, they don't give us too many rules, you know, just use at least eight characters. I would advise going for something a bit more secure um, and, you know, putting some numbers and things like that in there, but it's up to you. They do have this little strength indicator that's going to tell you how strong your password is. So, you know, aim to get a good score on that. Then we just pop our password in again to confirm that we didn't make a typo. Unfortunately, Google does think that it needs your birthday. I'm not sure why they've decided to make that a required field, but there you go. Same for gender. So they do have an other option if you don't identify as male or female, but again, they require it for some reason. Mobile phone is not required. Um, they will repeatedly ask you for your mobile phone number for like security and account unlocking purposes in case you ever got locked out. But it, you know, it's down to you. If for some reason you're seeing the wrong country and wrong country code, then you can come in here and you can select your country from the list. You can set up a, another email address. So an e email address that you already own so that if you got locked out of this account, they would have, you know, another email address that they could verify that it's you trying to get into your account. You've just forgotten your password or whatever. Um, but, you know, it says in the box, you have total control over this functionality through your account settings. You can choose, you know, why and how they're going to contact you. And then finally, location. Again, if this is not set correctly for you, then just open up the drop down and choose wherever you are. Then we're going to hit next step. So then we get the privacy and terms and conditions. And obviously you should always read through this. So they give us a very cut down version where they're just telling us the main points of everything, what data they're processing, why they're processing it and, you know, combining data. You can click these links to go and view the full terms of service, the full privacy policy and things, which obviously you always should do before you agree to things. But I am going to hit I agree. And that is it. Your new email address is blah, blah, blah. And you can see that it has lower cased it. But here where Google Chrome wants to save it, you can see that capitalization. So 
So I'm gonna say yeah, save it. So now we can hit continue to Gmail. So now it's just gonna kind of give us an overview. You can keep hitting next to see what it's saying. And this is, you know, the bar telling you how far through it you are. If you are not interested, you can just X out of that and you are in your email account. So once we're in, it's telling us, you know, you've only 10% set up your account. And I mean, that's not strictly true. It's kind of like you are good to go right now, but you know, it wants you to do things like choose a theme. So let's just choose a theme. Now I've made my email really ugly, but you see now I get a tick and it's like, yeah, it's 25% done. So you can just tick on these. You don't actually have to open them and go through them if you you know, don't want it there, or you can just click this to get rid of it. And then at any time you can come to the search menu and continue the setup process if you want to. So yeah, that is pretty much it guys. You can see you've already got a few emails welcoming you and you know, giving you information and stuff. Most of the things you will see on the setup, you can always re-access, you know, you can change your theme here and be like, that was a really poor choice. I want something, you know, more boring and plain and less distracting. That's not that much better. <laughs> but yeah, so that is it. You are ready to go. You are ready to use your new email account to give out your email address to anyone you want to. I hope this was helpful, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Enjoy your new email account.